All right, what's up, everybody? I am very excited to bring you my updated Magical Musketeer deck profile. This is, of course, with the inclusion of Magical Musketeer Max, who just came out. Uh, very interesting card, and we'll talk about it when we get there. Uh, but basically, the gimmick with Magical Musketeers is when a card is activated in their column, they get an additional effect. And also, whenever you have a Ma Magical Musketeer monster on the field, you can activate Magical Musketeer cards from your hand. This is a monster effect, so if they negate it, then you can't activate. So you got to be careful about that. Uh, but basically, let's get started. First card, we have Magical Musketeer Caspar. When a card is activated, a spell trap card is activated in their column. Uh, you get to search a card, a, ma a Magical Musketeer card from your deck, any card. It just can't be the same card that was activated in their column, in that exact column. Uh, this is the probably the best card in the deck. It is the Searcher. It's very, very good. Uh, definitely uh, a must, must three of. Uh, next, we've got three copies of Magical Musketeer Kid Brave. Um, this card, whenever a card is activated in its column, uh, you get to discard a Magical Musketeer card and then draw two cards. Usually you're discarding monsters and you're hoping to draw hand traps or just Magical Musketeer cards. We've got one copy of Doc. Uh, uh, when a card is activated in his column, you can add a Magical Musketeer card back to your hand. Next, we've these are the level threes because, of course, we are running the Ties of the Brethren. Uh, I also have the level four route. I like to play both routes. Uh, the Magical Musketeer Cast, uh, I'm sorry, Starfire. Uh, this card is another very good card um, in the deck. Whenever you activate a card in this card's column, uh, you can special summon a, a level four or lower Magical Musketeer monster from your deck in defense position. Uh, very good for enabling. Usually you want to use it before you use Ties of the Brother, but very good. Uh, then we've got one copy of Magical Musketeer Wild. I like this card personally a whole lot. Uh, you shuffle three Magical Musketeer cards from your graveyard back into your deck and then draw a card. And one Calamity. This card, you, have, you can, um, when it act, a card is active in its column, you can special summon a Magical Musketeer monster from your graveyard in defense mode. Remember, defense mode means you can't summon a link monster. But at least it's uh, not level 4 or lower, so you can summon a level 8 if you're playing it. Uh, and then we're playing, of course, the level 8. Usually I would not be playing this. In the old build, you would not be playing this card because it just, just doesn't mix with the rest of the deck. It used to be a very going first deck, and it was very bad going second. And you had no reliable way of summoning this card. Uh, but with Magical Musketeer Max, you can actually summon this card off of magic you, know, you can actually summon him uh so as you've seen i like to have as many different names as possible because i want to punish my opponent as much as possible uh and summon as many things as i can uh his effect is that if you tribute you can tribute summon one monster for him because he's a level eight but you can summon one if you tribute a magical musketeer monster but during your opponent's end phase you can draw cards equal to the amount of magical musketeer cards that you activate in that turn and usually you will activate like two or three so that that effect is totally broken it is really it has really it has no cost it's just you're, you're activating the cards anyway and then you're just drawing so finally you have a reliable way to summon him number one but number two most importantly uh and what makes this card so broken is it's like a multi-roll during your opponent's end phase like once once you act resolve max and then you resolve this it's basically a done deal. Uh, I mean, you're, you're up so much in card advantage, It's it's your opponent's not coming back from that. Also, the reason I play him is he's 2,500 attack. All of the Magical Musketeers are really, really, really weak. And it's a little frustrating uh, when your opponent summons a big, non-targetable monster and you have no way to get rid of them. Uh, it's good to have him because when you activate... One of the Magical Musketeer cards, Steady Hands, you can double his attack and make him 5,000. You can you can get over any of those problems. Because it, it is a little frustrating when they summon, not like not Chaos Max Dragon per se, but a monster like that. Uh, where it's just, it can't be targeted and you're kind of screwed. You're, you're, you're shaking your hand. You don't know what to do because they have this big non-targetable monster. And it's a little frustrating to get over that. Uh, but definitely this card, um, I'm, I'm very happy to include now. Uh, off to the... Oh, no, I'm sorry. We have three more things. Uh, just the hand traps. We play three copies of the Ash Blossom. The most versatile hand trap in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! 
uh, definitely worth playing. Uh, next, we've got three copies of Ties of the Brethren. Uh, basically, this card, you target uh, a monster and then summon two other monsters uh, with the same level, same type, same everything, but different names. So basically, you target Caspar, and then you get the special summon a Kid Brave and the Doc, or you target Starfire, and you summon a Wild and a Calamity. Also, as you saw there, I have different routes. I have the level 4 route and a level 3 route. Most people like to play just the level 3 route and they play uh, just the uh, Starfire and then just the level 3s. Honestly, I think the level 4s are actually half decent. They do rely on graveyard setup. Uh, but usually you will, with, with the new, with Max, I think it's better to have as many names as possible. Um, but again, it's up to you. We've got one copy of Upstar Goblin. You know, just quickly... Uh, starts, you know, you activate a card in the column, you know, get the search, get the get the flow, get the flow going, get the machine going. Uh, we play one copy of reasoning. It doesn't even matter whether or not they call it right. Most of the time, it's it's usually a 50-50. Uh, you have level threes and you have level fours, but most most opponents don't know that. Most opponents just assume you're going to play be playing the level threes, and that's if they're smart enough to know that. Uh, sometimes you hit the. Uh, the uh, I forget I don't even remember his name. That's uh, the level eight mastermind. Uh, sometimes you hit mastermind here and there, but most of the time, why I like this card is there was a point in time where I played the tune tune um, tune table engine, and the problem with the tune table engine is at the end you don't really, like you don't get anything. You either get a cyber tune cyber dragon or a tune world, and then you just pay a thousand activate another card, and I don't really see the point of it. Uh, but I mean, I, I'd say reasoning is probably a little bit better. It, it's an activation. You get a possible summon. Plus, you get cards in the graveyard, which is really cool. Uh, and then it sets up for all of the level fours, which is really nice because all the level fours basically have graveyard effects. But I like reasoning quite a bit in the deck. Uh, next, we've got two copies of Pot of Desires. Uh, you want to see it, but not like, not like too much. You know, you you, you kind of want to you you want to see it here and there, but I think three is just too much, and you have. A decent amount of one ofs in this deck where you don't really want to uh, resolve this too many times. You could easily replace this with something else if you feel uncomfortable with this. We've got two copies of Super Polarization. It helps us number one go second uh, if we have to. But this is a very this is a going first deck by the way. But it helps you go second, and it's very good to leave on the field and then interrupt your opponent's plays. Uh, we've also got three copies of Instant Fusion. Again, we got to activate these spell cards in these columns. You summon like a Caspar. Activate Instant Fusion, uh, Summon uh, th Millennium Eyes Restrict, and now you're protected from hand traps, so really awesome. And it's in the same, uh, you know, in the same chain. Uh, so you get the search, and then you can protect your, you can protect your, you can protect yourself from hand traps, so if they ask you, you can steal it, which is really awesome. Now we have the Magical Musketeer cards. We have three cross domination. This thing is really good. It's like impermanence, uh, plus it makes your opponent's monster zero. So really, really good. Um, uh, one copy of Steady Hands. I love this card. Doubles doubles your monster's attack. But again, I don't I don't see the point of playing more than that uh, because they are reoccurable. And forgot to mention all almost I think all of the uh, Magical Musketeer uh, spell and trap cards are hard ones per turn. So just going forward. Uh, then we've got, for the last spell card, we play one copy of Double or Nothing. This should have been with the other ones, but what can you do? One copy of Double or Nothing. We are playing Utopia Double. We are playing level four, so why not have it? Sometimes you get a quick and cheap FDK. I mean, uh, OTK, so why not? All right, off to the trap cards. We've got two copies of Magical Musket Last Stand. Uh, when a spell or trap card is activated, negate it, uh, which is really good. The only counter or trap, it's searchable. It's disgusting. Um, it is a hard once per turn. Uh, then we've got three copies of Magical Musket Desperado. I love this card too. Um, basically, you target one card on the field, destroy it. Uh, also, hard once per turn. Uh, it has to oh yeah, target one face up. It has to be face up. Uh, but I love this for dealing with Mystic Mind. I'll show you a really good like side deck combo later. Uh, then we've got one of the somewhat new cards last set. Um, Ma Magical Musketeer Crooked Crown. Uh, during your main phase, you can special summon. A monster, uh, a magical musketeer monster from your hand. Uh, it is a continuous card, which is a bit frustrating. 
Uh, and I only play one because you can only control one. So that's a little bit, you know, there's a few things going. So the problem with continuous magical musket cards is that it, it clogs that lane. So next turn you can't do anything. Uh, but basically when you special summon a monster using this card, uh, your opponent can't use that monster zone. Uh, so that's actually not too bad because, uh, so yeah, that's actually not too bad that your opponent can't active, uh, can't use that monster zone because sometimes like, an Orcus player will commit to uh, a certain side, and you can just activate that, and now they can't summon stuff underneath there, and it, it makes it a little awkward for them. It, it comes up occasionally. Uh, then we've got one Dancing Needle. Basically, this card targets uh, up to three cards in the graveyards and banishes them. You know, it's not like Called by the Grave, so they can still use their effects, but it, it it's good against, like, Orcus and um, sometimes thunder dragon depending on you know like you want it sometimes you want to get rid of their material so they can't summon uh their chaos dragon so that's not bad or you you want to get rid of the uh their cards so they can't resolve um pisty or lp or any of that stuff so sometimes that's pretty good and the last card is magical musket uh fiendish deal uh basically this card magical musketeer monsters uh you control cannot be destroyed by card effects so if your opponent like for example activates or a geki or a kaiju slumber uh you just chain this and then they can't destroy them um and then if this card's destroyed uh you can add a magical musketeer card from your deck to your hand uh which isn't bad um and and all of them like i said are all hard once per turn so you got to be very careful with them you never want more than one of them and that's why kid brave is so good and some of the other cards is that they get those out of your hand uh, but definitely, I'm, I'm happy with what the main deck has been able to do so far. Next, we will go to the uh, extra deck. We've got Super Polarization Target. We've got Salamangrate Violent Chimera for the Salamangrate matchup. One Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. This is, of course, for all the dark decks out there, like Thunder Dragon and stuff like that. Orcus. Uh, 1,000 Eyes Restrict. Uh, this is an instant fusion target. Good for going second. You wipe out whatever you need to. And... Uh, you wipe out whatever you need to and then just make it into a Link Karibo. Uh, then we've got one copy of Millennium Eyes. Uh, this is basically to steal hand traps. It's pretty good there. Uh, one copy of uh, Utopia 39. Uh, yeah, number 39 Utopia. Uh, this card's pretty sick uh, when it comes to... All right, we've got one, one copy of Utopia 39. Uh, so you can complete the Utopia double play. Uh, then we've got one copy of Tornado Dragon. This is to get rid of spawn trap cards. Uh, one copy of Abyss Dweller for graveyard nonsense. Uh, three copies of Max, because sometimes you have to go into a grind game against like strikers and stuff like that. You need to go through with that. Um, one copy, and this is a bit out of order, of Bushka. Not bad, just kind of, uh, you know, stall out if you need to. One Boral Sword, one Hip Ho Shinigan, and one Link Karibo to get rid of the level ones. Alright, coming up next is the side deck. Uh, we've got three copies of Denko Seko. Uh, and I love Denko Seko in this deck because uh, it combos really well against uh, Mystic Mine. Uh, because basically... All of the monster cards say that uh, you can activate these cards from your hand. So it, you never actually set them, which is awesome. So you basically, like let's say you're playing against Mystic Mine or Paleo or something like that. You normal summon this, and then they're kind of screwed, uh, especially Mystic Mine. They have no responses. And you just say, all right, I end my turn. Next turn, uh, you just, or, or you don't even have, oh yeah, and then next turn... You just summon one Caspar or any monster, and then you just start popping Mystic Mine with this. And there's nothing really, really they can really do about it, but activate another Mystic Mine. Uh, they can or, uh, activate like Oracle, Skull, and like dumb stuff like that. But in reality, all of your cards are being activated from the hand. Uh, so you're never ever setting anything, which is really cool. Uh, but that's a fun, annoying combo. But it's basically, that's my quick Mystic Mine matchup. Uh, then we've got three copies of Artifact Lancia. Uh, very important to get rid of Lancia. I mean, to, to deal with, like, Thunder Dragon. Thunder Dragon's, like, always your worst matchup because it just creates this, like, big board that's very difficult to break. And you need to be able to uh, suppress it as much as possible. One copy of Scythe. It'll, you know, it'll make sense, more sense later. Uh, 
three copies of Pankatrops. Uh, because sometimes you play against Floodgates, you gotta get rid, of, get rid of them. Two copies of Mind Control, this is again for going second. Uh, just in case you gotta steal something. And three copies of Artifact Lancia. This is if you know, if you know you're going first. If you know for a fact you're going first, Lancia is very good. And then you side out stuff like Double or Nothing. And maybe some of the other cards in here. Uh, you can uh, side out some of the Pot of Desires. Maybe a Reasoning. Reasoning is always a good to side. It's a nice card to side out going... Uh, going second it's pretty good no i mean not going second it's always a good card to side out when your opponent already knows what deck you're playing so you, it's just like a free spot for siding but if you know for a fact you're going first side these in uh they're very good you summon either a lancia or a scythe depending on what your opponent's playing you basically lock them out of Yu -Gi -Oh, uh for that turn so that is everything i hope you enjoyed it i really really enjoyed playing this deck over the last like 24 hours that I've had these cards. I've also been playing them online for quite a bit. But I think it's a very, very enjoyable deck. Uh, thank you and subscribe.